Let me tell you this story of the blood pelvis. Now, what do I mean by blood pelvis? Well, when I first started doing dissection, I was a practicing rolfing structural integrator, a bodywork modality, good stuff. And then I went into the dissection lab to try and understand my own work better. And I had my hands next to the psoas because all rolfers love the psoas. So I'm in a cadaver with my hands palpating the psoas, going up and down it with my fingers and doing the kind of thing that rolfers like to do. And then I kind of slid medially on the psoas and I found myself going down into the deep pelvis, but my fingers were trapped. Why were my fingers trapped? I asked myself. There's all this stuff. There was this whole gaggle of stuff inside the psoas running along the deep pelvis. Made me very curious. I dissected it hundreds of times. And this is what I found. The blood pelvis. Now, I could have looked in a book, but there's nothing like feeling this stuff. So the blood pelvis basically consists in the branching of the main trunks of the heart that run through the abdominal space. So we're on top of the spine here, getting down to the, to the sacrum. We're over the vertebrae, and we have the abdominal aorta and the vena cava, inferior branch. And they then branch immediately into the common iliac artery and vein. And then that branches into the external and the internal iliac artery and vein, creating this whole gaggle, this wall, this sequence. One, two, three, four of these great vessels. There are additional branches, too, going to the sacrum and the obturator area, and then finally out to your legs here. So that handful of vasculature I came to call the blood pelvis. When I dissect it out of the body as a, as a whole, it literally holds the shape of the deep pelvis. And it just struck me that maybe all that work I was doing in there in the pelvis was really all about the blood pelvis and wasn't about the muscle, muscle tissues at all. And maybe it was about the muscle tissues. I don't know. But I was able to add this whole creature into my concept of the pelvis. And it made my work and my idea of my body and the richness of everyone's body much deeper. Now, I have a model for you that I want to show you because in this in this flat version of it, you don't quite get it. So let me get my model. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have a so as handy, so in a pinch, this physio ball pumper upper will have to do <laughs> with a so as right there, right? So here's, here's a so as running over the pelvis. It's a little bulkier than your average so as. And now the blood pelvis. So come on in and have a look. I was here, and I was rolling my fingers in and encountered all of this structure here, right? Here's our aorta and our inferior vena cava. Here's the common iliac artery and vein. I actually call this area the humping frogs because it looks to me like, well, humping frogs so from behind. <laughs> so so um, and you'll have to excuse that. And then here we have uh, the branching of the common iliac into the external iliac, which goes over the, over the pelvis here and becomes the femoral artery and the femoral vein, but first the external iliac. And here the internal iliac artery and vein heading on over <laughs> to branch to the obturator foramen, etc. There are branches going to the sacrum, but when it comes to framing the deep pelvis, you can see that the whole deep pelvis is framed in your heart. Right? So your heart has a deep pelvis, too. These are branches of the heart center heading out to the periphery and back to the center again. And there's your blood pelvis. I hope that seeing it and maybe witnessing some of the depth of it, and this is pretty much to size here. Uh, it's fairly to scale. So it is my hope that in adding the blood pelvis to your concept of the pelvis, you might approach it differently, experiencing it differently. Maybe, maybe you can even feel that. That would be cool. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.